Welcome to the Nexus 2 help guide. In this video, we're going to show you how to add extra markers to a plug and gate model. In this video, we will be adding medial, ankle and knee markers to the plug and gate lower body model. You can use the same principles in this video to add more markers, such as marker clusters, to other plug and gate models as well, such as the full body plug and gate model. To add the extra markers, I have placed all the existing plug and gate lower body model markers onto my subject. I have then added four extra markers onto the medial knee and ankle joints. I've captured a trial where my subject starts off in the base pose and then goes through the range of motion for each joint, where the subject performs the star pattern for the hip, flexes and extends the knee, and rotates the ankle joint. The process is then repeated for the other leg. Finally, the subject returns to the base pose. In this video, where we are modifying the plug and gate marker set, we have got a full range of motion to optimize the joint locations. When we are using this modified VST on other subjects, it may not be necessary to have a full range of motion trial. However, this different workflow will be discussed in another video. I've already loaded the trial and reconstructed it. I've also loaded the plug and gate lower body AI VST, which is the one that I want to edit. The next step in the process is to calibrate the subject. To do this, I'm going to make sure that I'm on a frame where my subject is standing in the base pose. I'm then going to make sure that I'm in the tools pane pipelines tab and to make sure that the auto initialize labeling pipeline is loaded. The first operation is to auto label the static frame. Because we have extra markers, this may not work. And so I'm going to execute this operation by itself to make sure that all the markers are correctly labeled. I can already tell that my ankle markers have not been labeled correctly. To fix this, I'm going to navigate to the tools pane, label editor list, and label the ankle markers correctly. Alternately, you can manually label the first frame. Step two is to scale the subject VSK. This will scale the segments of the VSK to match the segment lengths of the subject. To illustrate this, I'm going to load the subject viewer. When I run this operation, you will notice that the model will resize accordingly to match the size of my subject. The final step in this pipeline is to use the markers only subject calibration pipeline operation. We are using the markers only subject calibration because the joint locations in the plug and gate model have already been optimized. And so all we need to do is to reposition the markers in the VSK. After the operation has been run, we can see that the markers have been repositioned in the subject viewer, but that the segments and joints have stayed in the same position. We can also see that the segments and joints have appeared in the 3D perspective. Finally, I'm going to save the subject and save the trial. Now that we've calibrated the VSK, we're ready to add markers. To do so, I'm going to go to the tools pane, subject prep tab, and click on add marker. This then prompts us to choose the segment. We can either choose the segment from the 3D perspective or through the segments list in the resources pane subjects tab. The first marker I'm going to add is the left medial knee marker. I'm going to place this in the left femur segment. And so I select the left femur segment in the 3D perspective. This then prompts me to choose the additional marker and I choose the corresponding marker. To finish the process for this marker, I press add marker again. I'm going to be repeating the process for the right medial knee marker. However, in this example, I'm going to choose the right femur segment from the segment list.
I'm going to repeat the process for the remaining markers. Now that I've added the extra markers, we can see them in the markers list. I could change the marker properties. This means that I could change the marker names, the color, the radius, or the status. And I could also reorder the marker list. The steps to make these changes are discussed in the video on how to create a custom VST, which is also listed and linked in the description below. And so I will not be changing the marker properties in this video. After the markers have been added and the marker properties have been adjusted, I now need to go through and make sure that all the markers are properly labeled throughout the trial. As we can see from the quality tab, and when we play through the trial, the new markers become unlabeled. Instead of manually labeling the trial, I'm going to save the subject and then reconstruct and label the trial. We can see here that there are no more unlabeled markers and that the markers remain correctly labeled throughout the trial. Although there are still gaps, we do not gap fill. We can see in the subject viewer that my left and right medial knee markers aren't correctly aligned. To fix this, I'm going to run the functional skeleton calibration markers only pipeline operation. I've chosen the markers only functional calibration because I want to keep the joints in the same position, but to reposition the markers around the joints. When this operation is complete, we will see the markers correctly align. We are now going to make sure that we're on a frame where the subject is standing in the base pose. We're then going to execute the set auto label pose pipeline operation so that we can try to use the auto label function for other subjects. Finally, I'm going to load the update skeleton parameters pipeline operation into my current pipeline. I'm going to highlight it, press show advanced, and make sure that update parameters is checked. And then I'm going to execute the operation. This will write these parameters back to the VST file, which will then be used for other subjects. Now I'm going to save my VST. I can now use this modified plug-in gate VST as I would a regular plug-in gate marker set. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at support at